Hello, welcome to Sonic Lab special. We've had a visit from the guys from Artoria who've brought that. This is Brian from Artoria. We've also got one of the engineers, uh, Jerome, who's going to tell us a bit more about the specs. Audio Fuse, finally here. Um, kind of a bit weird doing a video about an audio interface, but uh, there's a lot of stuff inside this. But first question, what took you so long? <laughs> yes, Nick. Well, firstly, thanks for having us here. It's finally arrived. Uh, it's been a long time in the making. The reason for that is, is that the product had been ready for about a year, a little bit more than a year. Um, we decided, though, to hold it back to make a better interface. It was good, but because it's the first interface from Arturia, we didn't want to deliver something that was just OK. We decided to invest more in the product, invest more in the team of engineers to create the best possible product that we can. We've now reached that stage. Audio Fuse is now available to buy. So it's here. I mean, one of the things about it, obviously, we'll, we'll go into maybe the technical spec with Jerome, but I mean, it's crammed with connectors. It certainly is. I mean, that's one of the key points of Audio Fuse is that it's a relatively small box, but it's got a lot of connectivity at the back. I mean, you would see that uh, there's not really much free space going on there because of all the possible connections that we've decided, uh, we try to put them all in there and more. So yes, there is a lot of connectivity on that. And that's one of the reasons that it took a little bit longer for right, us to Right, so I imagine cramming it. I also noticed, and I didn't know this, but it's available in different colors. We've got the colors behind there on the screen. Yes. So what's the, this one's the black yeah, so one with it, black and tan. Yes, so it comes in three colors just to give people the choice of which one is their favorite. Uh, at Archeria, we uh, always joke because each of us has got a different favorite. So this one here is the deep black unit. This one is the space gray, and it also comes in a classic silver as well. Which one sounds better, though? They all sound exactly the same, <laughs> but for some people who use it for a lifestyle situation, they convince that some sound better than the others. <laughs> of course they do. So maybe you could just take us through. Uh, right, first of all, it's a USB audio interface, right? Multi-connectivity audio interface. Yes. 24-bit, uh, 96K capable, or does it go higher than it that? It goes higher than that, up to 192. Right. 24192. So yes, it is a USB 2 audio interface. We tested the other protocols. We tried it with USB 3 as well. We decided to stay with USB 2 because the performance we were getting from it was uh, outperforming what we got from USB 3. So USB 2 for us still is very much the standard and it gives us the, the performance that we need from it. And is it class compliant then? Do you need uh, drivers? It or? is class compliant. So we decided to go the class compliant route instead of a proprietary driver uh, for a few reasons. So this will work with PC, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android because it's class compliant. Right, presumably, I mean, I don't think a, a, an iOS device could power it, so you could power it in no, a number You of would ways. need the camera connection kit to use it with the iOS device. And also, and it would, so it would have to get its mains from, because it's an external mains power as well. That's, that's right. right okay. Yes. Okay, well, maybe what you could do is just take us through the connections and we can have a look yeah, at that. Yeah, sure. So if you're looking at the front, we've got the mic and line inputs there, we've got the two of them. So there are um, now combi connectors on there. These right? are the combi connectors on these. And then you've also got the headphone connection. So it's two independent headphone outputs, each with its own volume control. Uh, you've got the quarter inch jack and mini jack per channel. Right. So if you someone like me who always loses those pesky little adapters, it doesn't matter. You can just plug it straight in there. Small little touch, but really useful. Yeah, I mean, I've had one here for a little while, and there are lots of small little touches in there which kind of go to make the sum of the whole. So that's the is that, is that the, that's the front. That's the front, it? yeah. The front. So if we look at the, the back of the unit as such, so we've got MIDI in and MIDI out on the small connectors, and that's via a breakout cable. It's like you got on the BeatStep Pro. Like basically. we've got on that, and simply there's just not enough space on you to have the no. standard five pin DINs on there. And also to keep it neat, everything is flush on the back of the unit there. Right. There's nothing protruding. Um, we've got SPDIF, word clock, we've got ADAT, we've got extra three, four analog over there. Uh, we've got speaker A and speaker B. So there's a switch on the top here when you're monitoring, just flick the switch. Um, also in the software, if you've got rather large loudspeakers on speaker B, you can set the attenuation in right. the software so you don't suddenly go from a nice gentle level to something really loud. Right. You can set that and save that setting. Um, you've got insert points over there. You've got phonos, which is for the vinyl guys who want to sample their funky drummer beats. So you've got RIAA preamps in there? We do, yes. Right. They've got their own preamps. 
in that as well. Um, and then you've got a three port USB hub, which is really useful if you're looking to use the old Steinberg dongle or your iLock. Uh, external USB hard drives, USB mouse, uh, whatever you can connect it on there. Right. So well, yeah, these days you don't get an awful lot, and certainly on the Apple products, you don't get an awful lot of USB. No, you don't. Ports. You don't. Well, and, none, um, <laughs> I'm one of those people with my various controllers, controller keyboards, and things like BeatStep Pro, um, the Steinberg dongle. It's you just need space to connect them all. And right, so, it's, so I mean, if that. you've got a power going into it, if you're using the external power supply, then obviously that will be a powered hub. Exactly. So right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a power hub. So as far as connectivity is concerned, there's a lot of features there. But also there's a few other hidden features that you can do with this, things like reamping you can do through this, which uh, Jerome, our engineer, will go into a, a bit more. And you've got an ADAT IO as well. We've got ADAT in and out on there. Again, for it's a relatively small unit. It does give you plenty of analog ins and outs, uh, digital in and out, but with the ADAT, if you want to expand it to an eight-channel mic pre to record a drum kit, for example, you can do that uh, expanding via ADAT. So for a small, neat little box, we've crammed a lot in there. So obviously, a lot of stuff on the top of the surface as well, and uh, we've, we're running some audio in the background. Again, you know, yes. it sort of felt a bit pointless, kind of going, look how great it sounds. Mm because obviously by the time YouTube's got hold of it, it's not going to, so it, this is sort of illustrative really. So we've got metering and an LED ring around the actual volume control, and that's a multifunction control, right? Yeah, it is, yes, it's a multifunction control. Uh, as you said, there are a lot of buttons on the top here. Now the whole concept we've gone for here is sort of one function, one button. There's no menu diving. That's very important for particularly the recording engineer of if you want to do something, you push a button and it's done. So all the way through, it's kind of like an, an old analog console, the way it's been lined out. So you've got your, your two channels, input one and input two. So each has got its own control section over here. Things like a mono switch on the master output. If you're monitoring in stereo and you want to monitor in mono, you click a button. Right, and okay. it's now so in it's mono. like master section functions. And it lights up as well. Um, you've got different cues as well. So in the software, which we'll look at later, you can set up different cues for what you want to come through the headphone outputs, what you want to go through master. Obviously, you can have something different going to headphone one than headphone two. So right. if you've got an acoustic guitarist and a vocalist, and you want to say something through talkback, it's right. got a built-in talkback mic as well, and you can say, guitar player, give a little more energy in that part, but you don't want to interrupt the vocalist. So you can have your different cues uh, set up that way as well. With the headphones, uh, you can monitor both headphone channels in monitor if you want to do so. And then you've got your phantom power phase invert pad um, and instrument over there. So when you plug your cable in, it'll pick up which it is. Um, switch on phantom power and you're ready to record. Uh, and this is this sets the input gain for the, for the two front panel inputs, right? That's right, yeah. That's the input gain for channel one and for channel two. Okay. And so um, this metering and level control, does it sort of show you how, you know, does this change color depending on what you're doing? I mean, it's... Yeah, it does. So when you, when you turn it, it goes to blue to show that there is something happening and it's picking that up. And then obviously as you uh, adjust it accordingly. All right, so it shows you the amount of volume you're you sending out. So you that's right, right okay. yeah, yeah, and, and then uh, towards the top to you get the and these are meters as well down here. These little LEDs. Th those are meters, yeah. Right, so okay, that's to show you the input levels, just to make sure that you're not going in the red. Okay, right, and uh, this uh, direct and computer, just so you can flip yeah, between it's, real it sort time. of it sort of does what it says on the tin really. So the the direct is just to get your direct level in. So uh, particularly percussive instruments or vocals, perhaps, you can just hear what's coming in. It kind of bypasses right, the whole so, circuitry. Yeah. And if you flick it over more to the computer, you'll get more of what's coming So you coming get a blend for real time. And I notice the metering changes as well. That's kind of it interesting. It does, yes. Yeah, that's um, right. relative to that. OK, so um, I guess we should probably talk to Jerome about some more technical aspects. Yes. I mean, these are coming out now, available now. All they're available stuff. now. All three colors are shipping right now. Uh, they're in stores, and we hope people will enjoy it. We've put a lot of work into this. Uh, like I say, we tried to make the best possible sounding audio interface we could. That's why it took longer. Uh, but we're getting the results that we're really happy with, and we hope that the, the pro engineers out there will and like I, it. I will. I would like to point out also that it's really nicely built. This is kind of aluminum, and you pop this on, it's got that really satisfying sort of you could just pop the case on, and it, it, it's got a 
you know, you've obviously put some some time and effort into the design of the case, and this, you know, this I guess this is this aluminium or it is aluminium. Yeah. Right. So we we've got it made from aluminium because there's a lot in there, and if powered up, it can get a little bit warm. So the aluminium nicely disperses oh, right, the okay. heat if it does get a little bit warm to the touch. Um, but yeah, the lid, it's not just cosmetic, it actually serves a purpose. So if you've got children or a cat in your studio at the end of the day, you just put the lid on. To transport it, it's really useful, so it doesn't take any knocks. Um, but we've also had people report back from s some countries where it's very dusty to say, thank you for putting a lid. At right, the end so of my session, I put the lid on just to keep the dust away. Uh, and the other neat little thing about this is if you've got your controller keyboard, you can just use that lid just to raise it slightly. Right, okay. And it kind of looks neat. Okay, well, Brian, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to get uh, Jerome up here and sort of talk a little bit more about the technical aspect, okay? Perfect. Cheers, Brian. Thank you. Okay, so we've got Jerome here. He's magically appeared, came all the way from uh, Artoria HQ in Grenoble, where he's one of the engineers who's been working on the kind of the second phase, the post announcement and getting it to market. Um, so there's some impressive facts and figures with the audio fuse. I did notice there's a little, does each unit comes with its own kind of little uh, yes, measurement? Yes, certificate, so. you're right. So um, in the production, at the end of the production line, so we test all the audio fuse one by one. And at the end, we print um, the certificates and uh, to show to the customers how uh, his his interface is going. Right. So it's individually measured. So that I mean, these are kind of impressive uh, figures, aren't they? So yeah. I mean, have you designed your own mic preamps? And I mean, is that the, have you kind of got that level of control or brought yeah. them in? Or so basically, if we go through all the input and output you have in the audio fuse. Uh, the input, you have two types of preamps. For example, so let's put that away. So you have, uh, for example, the input one, you have um, mic, line, or, or instrument level. If you plug an XLR um, cable, you uh, turn the input to mic. Right. So the mic preamps is activated. So we, the mic preamps, uh, it's made by discrete component, so we uh, design it uh, uh, from the ground up. Right. From the ground, yeah, you're right. Uh, on the uh, line uh, preamps is another uh, type of uh, preamps. Why we choose to make two preamps is because we wanted two different ga gain right. for the input. One uh, uh, higher for big input and another one uh, with less uh, right, so you're having them discrete. So, can you plug a line level? Because quite often, you know, in a situation, you might get given an XLR to plug it, which would, could be a line output from a mixer or from something. Can will the mic inputs accept that level of gain as well? Yeah, for like the mic input um, gain, it's uh, from zero to seventy-five right. uh, uh, dB. So, if you have the pad on, um, you uh, have. Uh, around zero dB, so no gain at all. So that would accept a plus four, so unless that's, it's really hot, right? Yeah, so that's more or less uh, line input. Right. So I see we've also got the uh, the Audio Fuse Advanced Audio Interface software up here as well, which gives us kind of access to all the individual features. I mean, most of these are available by the front panel, right? But y there are some other features. Yes, yeah, so, so the main feature for direct live uh, performance are uh, on the hardware. But you can have access to other uh, control in the AFCC, we call it, Audio Fuse Control Center. And you have, for example, uh, what Brian uh, told us before, uh, the reamp function. So, for example, you want um, to uh, record um, a guitar. Yeah. You plug in the guitar in an input. Uh, of course, the inst, uh, so it's input. Switch instrument level, right? Yeah, so you record it, and then you want to send it to, uh, to uh, an amplifier. amplifier. Yeah. So you uh, can um, turn the speaker B uh, into high level, uh, high um, impedance level. All uh, right, so it matches the level properly so that it'll work straight to the front panel yeah. of an amp without having to pad it down anymore. Exactly, so the output adapt his impedance uh, for the amplifier. Right, okay. And that's on a single channel, but that's something that's kind of specifically useful. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, and in terms of, because um, I know that people often say, you know, there are basically t only two or three different kinds of A to Ds and D to As. Presumably you're using an off-the-shelf uh, D to A and A to D in the unit. What, what are you using? Yeah, um, so we are using uh, AKM uh, converters. So that's uh, good converters. They have uh, one, 120 uh, uh, signal under noise uh, ratio. So that's really good converters. Right. And we build our preamps to make to to have the best uh, capabilities in between. Uh, All right. So you build the preamps to match the to match, to, to match the perfectly ADDs, right? the ADC the a, uh, ADC and the DAC uh, converters. Right. Okay. And I, I noticed that. So we've got a few configuration possibilities with the digital I/O as well. What uh, could you just take us through that? Yes. So um, in the uh, so if I can take this one, you have. Uh, SPDIF and add that uh, digital input and output. You can, in, in IFCC, change uh, the setting of the input and output. Uh, the coaxial um, input output can be also world clock. Ah, you so you just to... use it for clocking. Exactly, right. you, if you want to synchronize device. Um, so you can just um, change. For example, you have uh, SPDIF uh, digital uh, output. Uh, in coaxial or uh, optical, doesn't matter here. And in uh, digital in, you want uh, ADAT optical. So if you just set this uh, setting, the FCC will reboot. So we can see here, for example, up. So the FCC will reboot. All right, so now it's loaded into, uh, it's using the ADAT connection rather than the word. Right, OK, so they're not available simultaneously, but you can address them separately via input or output. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, and you saw the uh, audio didn't stop. So, like, the audio stopped when you change. Right, OK, yes. Yeah. Um, so you keep the same configuration as before, except you have ADAT in input now. So the other thing, I mean, obviously, when we're using that number of inputs, we've got up to 14 inputs coming in. Can you, can you use this almost like a mixer as well? So routes at those at various different levels and then maybe route them out to a, one of the speaker outputs or yeah. one of the other outputs and remember that state for standalone. Is that possible? Uh, actually, uh, so in, if you plug the device in, it's, it's an USB device. Right. So if you use uh, the device as a, like, uh, to record something, yeah. Uh, you can uh, have the 14th channel. Uh, if you use ADAT in SPDIF, you have only eight channels right. because uh, ADAT is up to eight channels. So, right. uh, so you capture, you record the 14 channels, and then you can mix in your computer. Right. Uh, inside the audio fuse, you can um, direct the sound, route the sound to three different um, channels, right. internal. Uh, virtual channels. All right, so main mix and I guess the Q mixes. The Q mixes, so Q1, Q2. And uh, then you can uh, send this virtual mix to output. Ah, so you, I mean, I guess if I was working live and I didn't want to use a computer, I could have, but I had maybe a little ADAT box and I plugged all my synths in and yeah. had a vocal mic coming yeah. into one of these and had the levels all set. Yeah. I could send a stereo mix out to a PA or whatever, and it would remember that when I switched it back on again. It saves exactly. the states. Exactly, it huh? saves the states. Exactly. So you just uh, modify, for example, you want the input one and input two uh, to the Q1, but not in the main. So now we are listening sound from the computer to the main, but like the sound which are coming from the input one and two are sending to the Q1. So you can choose, for example, the phone one to be the Q1 listener. Right, OK. Then you listen here to the uh, input level, and the speaker are yes. listening to the main. I, oh, so I see, OK. You can mix your, um, your audio uh, inside the interface. And is it possible to adjust the levels of the sort of ADAT inputs via the front panel, or does that all have to be done via the software only? Um, so there is two uh, aspects of this. There yeah. is a, a USB aspect. If you capture the sound, we don't modify it. Right. So it's directly after the ADC or the digital. Okay. Uh, so it arrives in your computer without any effect. But if you want to use uh, this interface as a direct uh, sound, 
so you choose, you um, turn the knob here to direct, for example, or if you are in the middle, it's also the computer and the direct. You can choose whatever you want. And um, you can choose, uh, for example, the ADAT uh, 1 to be muted, uh, the ADAT 3 to be better on the right, etc. Is that only you, but can you only adjust that from the software or can you adjust that from the front panel? Um, so this uh, typical uh, setting are only uh, right. on okay. the AFCC. But you could set that up to be, you know, however you want and then take it on the road with you or take it out for a gig or whatever. Okay. Exactly. So uh, we're running this on bus power at the moment, but it's also got an actual uh, DC power input as well. Is it there are different power modes? Yeah, so there is four power modes. Um, one which is full power mode. We call it um, auto mode. So you can set it in the AFCC. So you click on the A and in preference, sees you have the power mode here. So you can choose whatever you want. There is four power modes. So the auto power mode, um, choose whatever, whatever you plug uh, DC power or USB power, which mode so right. if you plug USB power, it turns on green mode. If it's not, if it's DC power, it turns on full power mode. So ah, you okay. have a really high output on input level. Right, so you get more gain. You get more gain. Okay. And you have two other uh, power modes, which can be really useful if you want to save battery in your... Uh, right, if computer. you're running it just from a computer and it was we were in a battery exactly. environment, right. Because it's more or less 10 or 2, uh, 15 watts, right. so that maybe doesn't mean something for a lot of people, but it's... That's, quite, that's pulling quite a lot of power, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, because the AKM converters and uh, preamps consume a lot of energy. Yeah. So if you, want, if you want to save your battery life, you can turn the audio fuse to another uh, power mode. For example, mix down, uh, deactivate your input. So, so you can was... listen to your music, Without uh, don't have to drive the record. Uh, ah, so you don't, you're not driving the input um, uh, preamps and, exactly. and ATDs and what have you. If you want, don't, doesn't want to record something. If you want to, uh, there is also the fourth one. It's the output with a green, so you have uh, also six dB less on the output. Right. So it's just it, just, it depending on how you want to have it, you can run it in a lower power mode. Exactly. Oh, okay. Right. I've got you. So what about phantom power? Will it run phantom power in all those modes? Uh, yes, um, except in the mix down because you don't have input. Right, okay. Yeah, so the two uh, modes uh, which allowed input um, audio, you can uh, turn the phantom power 48 volt uh, without uh, any problems. So you can have. Uh, um, Run a couple of condenser mics into it if you want, like a stereo pair. The other question was so we've got the phono inputs. Um, can they be switched? Because obviously in turntable mode, there's a different gain structure. Can you switch that out and just use them as kind of uh, consumer level line mm. inputs as well? No, there is only one uh, input. We don't have gain on the phono input. Right, okay. But, but the phono input, it's always a really huge, ga uh, huge gain because the, the voltage, uh, the trans audio transmission for, for phono, it's always really low. Right. So about uh, minus 20. Uh, All right, but I could so. plug my, uh, you know, the, my DJ mixer into there from phono outputs or a, 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 t a, a turntable. Have I got the choice or is it just... Yeah, you have the choice, ah, yes. Okay, right. So it's got a quite yeah. a wide range on it. Okay. Okay, so one thing obviously people will not know about is latency. I mean, I understand that's obviously down to the system and how, how many resources you kind of devote to the driver. But what sort of numbers are we getting? The latency inside the device is really, is really low, actually. You have about uh, one to five hundred uh, microsecond right, inside from the device from input to output. So that's nothing. When you go through your computer, if you are on Windows, you can have uh, uh, about five point four milliseconds. Uh, milliseconds. Right. Um, if you are on Mac, you can go down to four dot uh, something millisecond. And when you are on Linux. Uh, because Linux have a really uh, uh, some some version of Linux are really good for real time um, real time audio or video, for example, uh, things. So you have uh, down to two point seven milliseconds. So that's really good for 
real time. Um, right, it's a good case for exp experimenting with the Linux OS as well. Yes, yes, of course. So I also noticed uh, there's this A button here. Is that is that for power? Um, it will, but no, it's not. We will add that in a future upgrade uh, of the firmware. But now it's uh, it, we use this button to to launch. Uh, the AFCC. Oh, right, so pressing that brings this piece of software up on the host computer. Exactly, yes. And also, um, I think Brian mentioned about Linux as well. So is this actually going to, uh, will there be a control panel for Linux and drivers for Linux? Uh, for now, it's not uh, also. Uh, this AFCC works on uh, Mac and also Windows uh, yeah. open system, uh, but it will work on Linux. We work on it. Oh, so there's going to be a Linux version of this as well? There will be. Oh, interesting. Okay, so um, are there any other facts and figures? Because I mean, obviously, there's the detail, the scientific, the more scientific details of the specification, signal to noise ratio, that kind of stuff. Have you got any of those you could just give yes. us? Yes. So um, basically, like I, we uh, we talk about the uh, uh, signal to noise ratio for the AKM, yeah, which was uh, about 120. For the input, you you have about 116 uh, dB. Uh, of uh, dynamic, right, and for the output, it's about 119. If you use with the DC powers, and how, I mean, how have you managed to achieve these kind of great figures? Because obviously, you know, he's got things like jitter as well, the clock jitter. I mean, that's another big deal as well. You know, you want to yes. get it absolutely rock solid. I mean, you know, it's a small unit, so how have you managed to do all of that? Yes, uh, so we have a really good uh, oscillator clock, the clock generator inside. Uh, we managed to have uh, a really low jitter. Uh, lower is the jitter, uh, lower is the uh, distortion when you convert the audio with, uh, for example, the AKM, uh, the distortion is low. Right, so you get a much cleaner signal. Yeah. Because, I mean, a lot of budget, uh, certainly budget um, USB interfaces or, you know, audio interfaces, they introduce kind of, you know, pleasing EQ curves on the outputs just to sort of make it sound more flattering. So you're just going for a flat as a pancake yeah. as possible. Right? Yeah, I think that was the aim of our preamps is to be as flat as possible and then to add effect or colors after, yeah. but not inside the interface. Right. Excellent. Well, Jerome, thank you very much for coming in and telling us about AudioFuse. So uh, it's available now. Uh, Brian, how much does it cost? It's $599, 500 great British pounds. So $599, 500 great British pounds. Uh, Euros will be somewhere in between those two numbers. Uh, we'll probably scroll that below. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.